Hello YouTube, uh, today I want to talk about being insti institutionalized in and out of prison. I'm really hoping that people who may be on the way to prison, who are making bad decisions, listen to this. But before we go any farther, if you're new, subscribe. You know, if you like prison content, that's all I'll talk about really is prison and people getting out of prison. Uh, share, comment. I always try to answer the comments. All right, let's get into this. Uh, before, oh, before we do, I want to give a shout out to uh, Chad Marks of... Uh, Blood on a razor wire. He's got a YouTube channel, and uh, he's trying to keep uh, people out of prison too. And uh, he tells prison stories. And so if you're not subscribed to him, go check him out. Yeah, you know he's a good dude. He always gives me a shout out uh, anytime he's on a live, and so uh, I really appreciate that for me. So uh, check him out. See what you think. Anyway. When you go to prison, it doesn't happen at first. It's a gradual thing. Many people become institutionalized. They, uh, I remember one time at the walls, uh, I was waiting for a door to be unlocked, and uh, it was already unlocked. Uh, I was just standing there. And, uh, they had these metal, like, bar doors, you know, gate-like things. And the guard told me, he said, it's unlocked. And he just kind of laughed. But that's the kind of things you uh, you deal with. And, you, and over time, it gets worse. And some people get to where they can't function on the outside. You know, the, the prison's all they know. Um, I've seen that with a few people. And they're not coming back because they're committing more crimes. Although they do to come back they're coming back because they want to come back it's, it's what they know so uh, with me it was just little things at first I noticed and then it was just more things you know um, uh, it's hard to explain but uh, it's like you get used to the routine, the monotony of everything. And uh, you just, you want to, uh, any changes is really messes with you, you know. Everybody has the routine in prison. I mean, you can't have too much of it. A different routine because it's pretty much the same for everybody you know you get up at a certain time there's counts all through the day all this and that and it becomes automatic but like people who work out uh, the workouts become like a habit for them a routine for them and, and if we're on lockdown or something They'll work out in their cell. I've done it. It's just you feel the need. Like if you if you work out, you feel the need to work out. And so when you're on lockdown, man, I gotta do some push-ups. You know. And so you get used to uh, doors opening. Them telling you to lock down, this and that, it becomes an everyday thing. And like I said, some people, they want that. I had one guy 
say that he could not function in the free world. Not that he couldn't get a job, because he did get a job. But he just couldn't function. Now, this carries on to when you get out. I remember um, when I first got out, I was trying to uh, get my social security number and everything because it had been lost. They said, well, can you remember your number? My first thing I almost did was say my prison number. In fact, I did start saying it, and I stopped myself. Then there was a thing where I would not leave the house until somebody said I could. That lasted a few days. I finally got over it. And then when I would leave, I because we used to, behind the walls, we'd carry our IDs in our pockets. But later on, they gave us these clips. They punched holes in our IDs and, and put clips on them and wanted us to carry them on our shirts. So every time I'd go out, I'd feel for my ID and almost, you know, panic. I didn't feel it, you know. It was like, oh, cr crap, you know. But these are the things you have to go through. And then there's other things I go through. I think I mentioned them in other videos. Uh, but the one thing I did not mention, I don't think, is, um, and this is going to be real hard to explain, so I think other ex-cons that's been down for a while, or maybe even not for a while, will understand where I'm coming from. Um, but those of you who haven't, may not, and but I hope I can explain myself in a way that you understand. There is a, it's quiet out here, for the most part. And what I mean by quiet, I mean it's prison quiet. You know, it's, it's not like, yeah, you may live in a city where there's a lot of noise and stuff, but it, there's not the noise of prison. So, sometimes I think it's too quiet, and I think something's about to happen, because when it's quiet in prison, something's about to kick off. You know, if you're in the chow hall, and, you know, there's people talking, you hear people talking, if it all of a sudden gets quiet, something's about to happen. But, the part I'm going to have a hard time explaining is, uh, Look, I didn't like the, the violence and stuff. It was just part of the life I I had when I was in prison. You know, I've seen some stupid things. I've seen people fight and stab over stupid things. I mean, for crying out loud, I was telling somebody the other day, they're, they're stabbing each other over phones now, fighting over phones. But... uh Let me see if I can get this. <laughs> so you won't think I'm crazy. I hate all of that. I didn't like any of it. But there's a small part of me now. That misses it. And when I say miss it. It's not. It's like. It's like I was saying before. If it's quiet. Then I, I think something's about to happen. But if. I kind of missed it. Uh. Stuff that was happening, you know, because that was stuff I knew about. Uh, out here, I don't know. You know, I see people in a store or something. You know, in prison, you didn't. If you bumped into somebody, you say, hey, "My bad." And out here, you don't know how the next person's gonna. Act, you know, you don't know if they're going to be whatever, you know. But I pretty well knew how people were going to react in prison to certain things. And whether they was going to do this or do that, you know. This person 
he ain't got it in him to fight. This person, he'll fight at the drop of a hat. This person like me, he'll fight when he has to. He doesn't want to, but he will. And so, out here, you don't know. So if somebody, I'm still, I'm still good at pretty much sizing people up, you know. But you still, it's not a prison environment, is what I'm saying, so. You don't know, with well, this person, you know, he, he looks like he might fight. But he, is he really going to fight over something like this? When in prison, I know they, they probably would. But I hear you, you're thinking, well, he might not, you know, because it's, it's the free world. The people, there's a respect thing in prison. Some of it I like. You know, some of it's stupid. But the people in prison seem to have more respect than a lot of people out here towards the other people. And there's more people that's real. A friend of mine, John Evans, told me, because I was talking about fake people in prison, which there are. You know, you have... Uh, People coming in saying that, uh, well, they'll, they'll say one thing or and then do something else, you know, it's, it's fake. They'll talk bad about one group of people and then you'll see them talking to them and, hey, how you doing? Be real. I don't care if you hate somebody. Don't hate him behind his back and then like him face to face hate him in the, in front of him too you know be one way or the other how do you like him or you don't you know? it's like there's a lot of young people coming in they'll talk all this racist stuff and uh say they hate blacks whatever and then you see them talking to them and kicking it with them and you know joking with them dude you know, and sometimes I wanted to front them out, but I never did. You want to tell me? You want to tell them what you just told me about them? But I never did do that. You know, it's none of my business, but... Like John Evans was telling me, regardless of that, there's still more real people in prison, or people who have been in prison, than there are out here, those who haven't been in prison. And, uh... It's the same way with me, you know. I told you I'm always going to be honest with you. I, I'm going to shoot straight, whether it's against me, for me, whatever, you know. I'm going to I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, and people may like that or not, but you know, I, I don't know how to be any other way. Uh, but when I see fake people out here. And people complaining about the most, to me, the most trivial things. When there's people in prison, maybe they should be there or there, maybe they shouldn't be there. But the point is, they got a lot worse than we have right now. We're out here. We really shouldn't have anything to complain about. We're waking up and we can go where we want. Every day. And there's people complaining about something somebody said. You know, get over it. You know, words, what people say to you are not going to hurt you. A piece of steel will. That's what will hurt you. That's what will put you in your grave. Not that somebody called you a name. You gonna get upset over that? If you're getting that, if you're upset enough about somebody calling you a name, you're, you're upset enough to fight them. But yet you, you, you don't do anything. Let that, let that go. And those of you uh, running around, 
especially young people, but I mean, there's some older people, but it's mostly young people. The thing with young people is, because I was like this, you know, you, you're you not really thinking about consequences of what you, you do. And you do not want to go into a situation like somebody else said once, um, where mommy and daddy and the Lord ain't going to be on the yard with you. You're going to be out there alone. Unless, you, you know, you grew up in that type of environment, you got friends in prison. But most of the people around here, these small towns, they're going to know nobody when they go to prison. And then, you're going to be in a world of hurt. You're going to have a couple options. And you fight, stand up for yourself, which I hope you do. First, I hope you don't ever go to prison, but if you do, I hope you stand up for yourself. But I've seen some of you guys around here, and some of you guys ain't. The one, the, some of the young people I've seen these days ain't got it in them. I ain't talking about those from the inner cities who grew up fighting and in violent neighborhoods and stuff. I'm talking about these little farm boys running around here. You guys ain't got it in you. And I'm, I'm just going to be honest with you. Most of you are going to go to prison. You're not going to stand up for yourself. You're going to be taken advantage of. Whether it's monetary wise. Or whether it's sexual. Or you can go to PC. Some prisons got PCs now. Licking's got a PC now. They used to not have one, but they made half the whole PC. And I just, uh, I'm not trying to put you guys down. I'm not trying, trying to berate you. I'm trying to keep you guys out of prison. You know, uh, something's got to change, people. But, you know, like this small town I'm from, it's like, I think, Two or three hundred people. A bunch of kids broke into Casey's. And all they stole was, I think, like some cigarettes or something. Is that worth going to prison over? And you're running off laughing. And to be honest, he was really stupid how he did it. These kids, two of them, broke the glass out in Casey's. They had a ski mask on. And then when they got inside, they took the ski mask off. So they knew who did it. You don't think there's cameras inside? Not only are you kids doing stupid things, but you're doing them in stupid ways. So that's what all I got for you guys today. Um, Pretty much um, my take on being institutionalized in and out and how I think about other people. <clears throat> let's just, you know, excuse me. Let's just uh, get our acts together. Appreciate being free. Don't take anything for granted. Those of us who have been in prison, been in jail, we know what it's like. You know, you guys are... <laughs> Young bloods running around, knowing nothing. Young kids. You think you know it. And then you'll be crying yourself to sleep at night when you go to prison. Because uh, most of you are not, you ain't got that mentality. Alright, that's all I got for you today. I thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. And I'm sorry for three in a row, but uh, I thought I'd surprise you with one on Tuesday. So here it is Wednesday. We had one Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Next one will be out Friday. Promise they won't be one Thursday. <laughs> All right, you guys have a good time. Thank you.